CV joints or constant velocity drive axles. We're going to swap one out today, uh, change one on a front wheel drive vehicle. We're going to show you how to do a 50 minute job. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take the tire off the vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, you know, typical safety precautions, you're going to want to uh, use jack stands. Don't get underneath the vehicle either. And uh, remove the tire. You don't even have to take the brake calipers off for this type of vehicle anyway, you might have to with others, but anyway, um, it's pretty straightforward, so uh, remove the tire and let's get started. Alright, to get things started here, we're using a 32 millimeter um, socket here. Yours might be different, uh, might be bigger or smaller, it depends on what kind of car you're going with here, so we're going to go ahead and loosen that off. It might be stubborn, you might need a breaker bar on top of that as well. Okay, so if we take note very quickly here, we have, uh, this is our front end components, this is our tie rod end. Uh, for our Honda here. Um, if we take note that the control arms are not plastered in grease. Okay, you notice everything's nice and clean over here. We come over here, we notice our front end components are actually coated in grease. And the main cause of failure for constant velocity joints is in fact the boot. And what we have here is the boot is split and the grease has run all out of it and it's starting to run dry, which is not good. This is going to cause failure, so we definitely have to change this before we end up breaking down because of it. So, um, this is the number one cause for premature failures. The boot wears out, I get a crack in it, and the grease runs out of them. Okay, so if you're dealing with a, a Honda vehicle, uh, actually most vehicles are pretty well the same. This is your, your longer shaft, and you have a shorter shaft. Um, with the Honda vehicles, um, the longer one... Uh, is on the driver's side, the shorter one is on the passenger side. Now if you're working with a GM, it's vice versa. The driver's one is um, the longest. Uh, actually the driver's side is the shortest and the uh, one for the passenger side is usually the longest. So this is a healthy, you know, CV joint drive axle. Okay, see our boots are in uh, fantastic shape. Um, normally uh, the way you tell if these are going or not, or if they're running dry, for example, is if you're driving the vehicle and you notice that the vehicle is in fact making a, a very audible clicking sound um, during curves, that usually means your outer CV joint is done. If your inner CV joint is done while you're driving and you say go over a catch basin or, or a pothole, for example, and you hear a big loud clunk, all right, that usually indicates that the, um, CV, the inner CV joint is in fact failing, so either or. Um, you know, but the main cause of failure for these units is uh, lack of lubrication. So if you, the boot ends up wearing out and has a crack in it and water gets in it or the grease runs out of them, this is usually the cause of the failure is the boot. So pretty straightforward with this type of vehicle. We do not have to remove the brake calipers or anything of that nature. We do have to remove this yoke, which is for our strut tower, or for our strut uh, assembly rather. Uh, so we have to unbolt that unit and then just separate it out of the way because your CV joint actually runs in through here. Next, remove the cotter, kit, cotter pin that uh, is attached to the lower ball joint. 11 16 socket is required in order to remove it. Oh, That's toast. Very much so. Next we're removing the, uh, the yoke as our strut here, our strut assembly. We must uh, remove the strut, lower part of it here, away from our control arm in order to remove our CV drive axle. And there it is. She's toast. I'm going back for that. Alright, so the uh, installation of the unit is basically the reverse of the removal. We're going to go ahead and install our unit here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and install it into the transmission. What you're going to want to do is push the axle 
into the transmission until you kind of hear a snap. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this right now in real time. Sort of shock it in. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Now does it come back out easily? Just check and pull with your fingertips? No. Good. Then I click. Well, you could hear it click in. Yeah, you I know. You could hear it snap in. That's yeah. the check. Would you just, just your finger? Yeah. No, it's it's in there nice and steady. Okay. Install this shot now. Okay. What year is this Honda Civic? This one here is a '95. They're both '95s. Turn that axle in to the uh, drum assembly. Okay. That's it. That's it. Just lay in. get it far enough you can pull it with the nut. There we go. That's good enough for now. Right on. Perfect. Okay, okay so right now we're installing the, uh, the ball joint uh, back to the um, steering knuckle and I'm right now I'm also installing the bolt for our strut assembly to our lower control arm. I'm going to torque them down momentarily here and uh, then we're going to go ahead and install our axle nut you may just have to pull on the the axle unit as well just to get some thread so you can uh, install your axle nut okay i'm going to get just a little bit of a twist here though. i'll hold this thing. okay there you go hang on okay, okay got it there you go. Give her a good crank. Yep. So when you're doing a job like this and you're removing old cotter pins, make sure always first and foremost you always replace them with new ones. Okay, so right now this particular vehicle calls for 134 foot pounds for the axle nut to be torqued out. So I'm going to set my um, my torque wrench for that. And we're going to go ahead and torque this. Here. There she she's torqued. Yep. So after about 50 kilometers or 30 miles or so, we're going to uh, recheck them and torque them if necessary. That's all there is to it.